Hi, my name is Jen, and I'd like to share my experiences surrounding the birth of my two children and talk about how my second baby's early induction changed our lives forever. My first child was born three and a half years ago. The OB who followed my pregnancy was someone I trusted. My pregnancy with my daughter was planned and healthy, but her birth did not go as I expected. I was induced at 40 weeks and ended up having a C-section when my cervix didn't dilate past three centimeters. Two years later, my son Maverick would be born and I hoped for the natural birth I had missed out on with my daughter. I had a normal pregnancy. I didn't have health issues, nor did my baby. I told my doctor that I wanted to have a vaginal delivery. He told me that because of my previous C-section, there would be too many risks for me to have a natural birth. At that point, we discussed the reasoning was that I could hemorrhage or that I would have the same issues as my first delivery. I felt like I wouldn't want to take that chance. If a C-section was that safe to do, I trusted what he said, which was to have a second C-section. As time got closer, he discussed scheduling the C-section. At first, he told us that once you are 37 weeks along, the baby is fully developed and they are just gaining size. He did not offer any testing to see if Maverick's lungs were mature. He estimated my son's size and said he was big enough. So after that visit, my husband and I went into the hallway with the doctor and he set up my appointment for my C-section. All the evidence he gave us pointed towards a C-section being safe after 37 weeks and the best choice for me. He never talked about any risk of doing this and we didn't know that we should ask. He scheduled it on Tuesday, August 19th, 2008. It was set up in the morning, and that date was when I was 38 weeks pregnant. Fortunate for us, he was on vacation the week before. Otherwise, he would have done it at 37 weeks. If that would have happened, my son might not be with us today. The morning of August 19th, 2008, we went to the hospital for my C-section. We were so excited, we couldn't wait to see our son. During the C-section, when my son was delivered, he barely cried. I asked if he was okay, and the reply was, he is fine. I was taken to recovery. He was taken to the nursery, or so I thought. Meanwhile, it was just my husband and I in the hospital, so of course he stayed with our son. I was extremely sick from the anesthesia, so I was in and out of it. It wasn't until three or four hours later that my husband came to tell me that my son was in the NICU. My heart broke to hear those words. I knew what the NICU was from my prenatal tour, but I never thought my baby would end up there. I was so scared and felt completely helpless to do anything for my baby. At that point, no one really could explain what was wrong. My husband told me that his chest was pounding so rapidly it was unbelievable. A neonatologist was taking over his care and they still couldn't explain what was going on. It was so confusing and frustrating to not get any answers. I had expected to hear my baby's strong cry and to have that amazing moment where I would get to hold and see him for the first time. Instead, I didn't see him for the first time until 10 p.m. that night. He was born at 8.38 a.m. Through the night, I was in the NICU. All I could do is hold his little arm through the plastic incubator. That next morning, my husband and I were next to his incubator, still watching his chest pounding like crazy. I left the NICU for a moment. Shortly after, my husband came to my room crying that our son started turning blue and he couldn't breathe, and they made him leave the room. Maverick's entry into the world was nothing like we imagined. We soon found out that his lung had collapsed. We were told he might need ECMO and that only a few NICUs have this machine and that he would only survive one transport. Once stable enough, Maverick was life flighted to a tertiary care center. I was so scared, nervous, unsure of what was going to happen. My husband pretty much left as soon as our son was in the helicopter, and he met him at the hospital, while I remained an inpatient nearly two hours away from my baby. My husband told me that Maverick was hooked up to many monitors and machines. It was very confusing for me as a parent to understand everything. For more than 24 hours, I had to stay at the hospital where I delivered Maverick and was unable to see my sick baby or talk to the doctors and nurses caring for him. 
because they wouldn't discharge me. I only saw my doctor once after Maverick's delivery for approximately five minutes as he downplayed my son's condition. By saying he will be fine, he might have to stay in the NICU for a couple extra days. But that's it. My doctor never saw me again in the hospital following that conversation. I had hoped my doctor would come to the hospital to talk to me and explain more about what had happened. I saw my doctor that following Monday for my stitches to be removed. I thought he would be aware of Maverick's condition and know why it had happened. Instead, he told me that he was so out of the loop, he didn't know anything about babies once they are born. To this day, I still don't know whether my doctor wasn't aware of the medical literature and recommendations or if he just chose to ignore them. Maverick spent 10 days in the tertiary care center. Each of those days, we made the two-hour drive to be with him. During his stay, he was diagnosed with PPHN, received multiple blood transfusions, and spent eight days on a ventilator. It was a daily waiting period to see how he would do. They couldn't tell us how long it would take for him to get better. It all depended on him, they would say. But Maverick is an extremely strong little man, and even to this day, he is very bold-headed and stubborn. Thank God that is his personality, to be a little fighter, because he needed to be. Finally, two weeks after our son was born, we were blessed in being able to bring him home. Our family went through an emotional roller coaster, the scariest time of our lives, all because of my doctor's decision to deliver my baby before 39 weeks. This was a real eye-opening experience for us, and since all of this, I have learned a lot more about this topic and how common it can really be. If I could do it over, I would not have scheduled my C-section before my baby was ready. I wish somebody would have told me what I needed to know so that I could have asked the right questions. I would have asked about the risks. My son is now 20 months old and is doing great. Despite the extra medications, precautions, cardiology follow-up, and fear that comes along with those things, we are extremely blessed and we thank God every day for the family we have and the miracle of our children.